Let's talk multi-grip bars and what I call playground physics. So our playground physics discussion in regards to multi-grip bars. Multi-grip bars out there have what we call center of mass, which is the center of the bar, that's where the weight sits, is the same plane as the center of rotation. This here is a teeter-totter, the exact same thing. It's rotating about this point. Okay, this by definition is inherently unstable. In fact, this point right here is an infinitely perfect spot, which means that it can never be found. So you're always gonna be fighting instability at the wrist. Watch anyone that picks up a, a multi-grip bar and they will choke up on one side of it before they take it out of the rack so it doesn't crush their face. It also destabilizes the joints downstream as we do this. I call it playground physics because everybody knows if you go to a playground, teeter-totter will always be sitting one way or the other. It will never find center. It can't and it won't, just like your bar in your hand. So what we've done with the arc in the bar, this is our center of rotation. This is our center of mass, where, sorry, this is a swing set in a playground. Where does a swing sit when you walk into the playground? Always center. It will always find center, even if you're a little off. We stabilize that platform, okay? The other unique thing that we've done, so again, here we've got the weight. Every handle position is above that point. It's the same concept we've employed with our trap bar in providing the stability uh, in that bar as well. Now, the other thing we've got is most multi-grip bars are a neutral grip bar, okay? <clears throat> Which works for a very close grip when you're in this position right here, elbows at your side. But we actually want to bias just a little on the external side, or sorry, a little bit on the internal side. So internal would be this direction, external rotation this way, okay? If we leave a little bit left for external rotation to be set, so cueing and engaging, we're gonna get better muscle recruitment. So we want to be neutral, but just allow a little bit of opportunity for external. Thus, our grip position. Now, you may not be able to see in the camera, every one of these grips is at a different angle. <clears throat> Why is that? Okay, because the further out you go wide, the more internally biased you are, okay? So we don't want the same grip at every position. What we wanna do is stack these. It may be subtle as far as the, the impact, but that's gonna allow us a really great stack in the wrist position, okay? And what that'll do is that's gonna affect the link tendon relationship of all the muscles in the forearm, which is then gonna affect the elbow joint and tension in the elbow which is gonna affect the shoulder. So you start combining all these concepts together and all of a sudden, now you've got this bar that you basically cannot get the shoulder in a bad position while training. And what does that allow us to do? Add extra range of motion at the same time. So now we're able to gain additional training effect while reducing our risk for injury, improving our movement output and making it more athletic at the same time. Because where do we develop power from in most athletic sports? We start behind the shoulder. If you're starting out here, you're too late to the game, okay? So it doesn't matter, nearly any position, uh, sporting position that uses the shoulder as a powerhouse, we need to be starting sooner. But here we're allowing that we, we basically not allowing the shoulder to be compromised whatsoever. Once you put this bar in your hand, you will feel the effects. It will feel like nothing else you felt and you'll be able to train at a range that you never thought possible and that's going to accelerate your performance.